Today I'm gonna show you how we made this. Hey guys, I'm Dari and welcome again to another filmmaking tutorial. This film was our entry for 2017 Dora 2 Short Film Contest. It was quite an ambitious project, so we started a crowdsourcing campaign to raise the fund that we need and gather a team who are willing to work on this project. If you haven't watched the film, check the link on the description below. And we also made a video about the planning, so if you want to watch that as well. Before I start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. First is a close-up shot of our hero, Juggernaut, played by our friend here, Ryan. I asked him to simply dash forward. Easy. Next is the Omni Slash. I wanted to show how the hero actually carried out the attack both in slow motion and real time. The main shot is where the creeps are acting like they're in slow motion. One, two, three. Then chroma shots of our hero swinging the sword in real time. We filmed it three times, one for each attack. I did the same process for the next slow-mo shot. The real-time shot, on the other hand, is quite easy. Go. By the way, that's Sir Rex. For this shot, I instructed Ryan to do the attack in real time, while Rex is running away in slow motion. I took a photo of each fallen crypts, then I took a photo of this axe as if it's falling mid-air. For the last shot, I have no idea why they are doing it in slow-mo. Perhaps Ryan struggles to move with the costume. I don't know, I can't remember. It looks funny though. Now let's move to the editing. Be ready because this is going to be f***ing Oh, take a haba. Ito. Gigigil ako, nanggigigil talaga. The reason why I find it hard to create a tutorial like this is because in order to capture the whole editing process, I have to do it all over again. All the steps, and it's so frustrating because there's no way around it. <sighs> so, lesson learned. From now on, I will record my whole editing process. Okay, game. For the first shot, there are only two effects. First is the glowing eye effect, and second is the actual attack. But he noticed that his mask looks big, making his body look smaller, therefore making him look like just a normal dude because, you know, broad shoulder indicates strength. So I decided to fix that first before I work on the first two effects. I pre-composed the shot, duplicated the layer, then I separated the body using Roto Brush tool. I simply increased the size of the body, then I fixed the overlapping edges with the simple mask. For the eye, I wanted to use the actual eye shape from the mask. I added curves to push the contrast, added threshold to separate the whites and the blacks, I inverted the color so the eyes are white, then I extracted the eyes by masking. To add the glow effect, I created a solid layer, added optical flares, set the source type to luminance, set the source layer to the eye shape I created earlier. Then set the render mode to transparent. Next, I edited the look of the flare, then I used glow and streak. I played around with the brightness, scale, and stretch. Then I switched the global color to orange. I reduced the opacity to 70%. Then finally, set the blending mode to hard light. For the dash, I skipped to the frame where I want him to start. I duplicated the character, including the eye effect. Pre-composed the layer. Then freeze the frame. I skipped two frames forward, then I animated the position, rotation, and scale to make him look like he dashed forward. Then turn on the motion blur. Add camera shake effect by simply animating the position. Nice. Next shot. First, I created a null object to capture the motion of the shot. Here, I will attach all elements that will be added later. Second step is to match the timing of the slash to the reaction of the enemy. Once the timing is matched, 
I parented the shot to the null object I created earlier so it follows the camera movement. I changed the speed using time warp effect. He starts at 300% speed when he enters, then quickly slows down to 10%. Then from 10%, I skipped a few frames then increased to 300% as he exits. I removed the background using key light. And now we're done with our first attack. I repeated the process with the other shots. This part right here is a nightmare for VFX artists. Now that all the shots are aligned, I connected the gap using the method I used in the first shot. I freeze the frame, then I animated its position. Turn on the motion blur. There we go. Now let's add some blood. I downloaded this blood splatter pack from cutestockfootage.com. I imported the clip to my composition, removed the green screen using key light, reduced the speed using time warp, I matched the direction to the angle of the attack. Turn it to black using hue and saturation effect. For the sword, I created a shape layer, then I traced the shape of the actual sword. I added fill effect, then select a light shade of yellow. Added a simple glow effect. Now I traced the shape of the sword for the entire shot. I exaggerated the shape on some parts to emphasize the slash. For the next shot, I used the same method. First, match the timing of the attack and reaction. Add the eye glow effect, freeze frame, then animate the position. Add the other crypts, add blood, then the sword. For this shot, first I duplicated the layer, rename it ranged crypt. I used Rotobrush tool to separate him. Since the effect on the background will be very quick and minimal, I didn't have to refine the roto. I captured a still frame of the hero from the previous shots. Then, I animated the scale and position. I matched the timing of the attack to the reaction of the creeps. Then, I animated the opacity to make him disappear and reappear on each attack. Turn on the motion blur, there you go. For the sword, I used a different approach. I created a solid layer, pre-compose, then rename it to slash. Inside the pre-comp, I added fill effect set to yellow. I created a round mask, then I animated its movement from left to right, back to the main comp. To create a light streak, I draw a mask where the light will travel. I added a time remap effect to increase the speed. I duplicated the layer, then changed the shape a bit to create another streak. Finally, I added the same glow effect I used from the previous shot. I repeated the process for all the attacks. I added blood effect for each attack. Nice. For the next shot, I used this photo as my main plate. I added the clip of the range creep running in slow motion. I added the footage of the hero, but the creep on the ground is not in this shot. So I masked his feet to show the creep on the background. For the dash, I used the same technique. Freeze frame, then animate the position, scale, and rotation. Turn on the motion blur. Next, I added the shadow. Create an adjustment layer. Add a simple curves effect to darken the image. Then I mask the part where the shadow would be. Lastly, I added the sword. Next, I'll add this photo on the foreground. I want him and his axe to be falling in slow motion. I imported the photo in Photoshop. First, I separated the axe. Then I did some cleaning. I also separated Zack from the background. I removed the axe since it should be mid-air. Then I detached his hand so I can animate it like this as he falls. I imported the PSD file into After Effects. I animated the position and scale of the axe. I used Puppet Warp tool to animate Zack's movement. Now on the final shot. First, I adjusted the speed using Time Warp. I started from 800% back to the normal speed. Then I increased the speed on the second attack to 300%. 
Perfect. Next, I added the sword. And lastly, the blood. But this time, I want the blood to splat on the ground right after the attack. First, I track the camera movement only on the part when the blood hit the ground. Next, I selected the area where I want the blood to be attached. Then select Create Solid and Camera. Pre-compose the solid. Select Leave All Attributes. Then I renamed it to Blood Splatter. Inside the pre-comp, I added the Blood Splatter image. Fix the orientation so it matches the angle of the slash. Nice. Now all the VFX shots are done, the final step is to add camera movements to all the shots. Since most of the shots are static, adding handheld effect or camera shake will definitely heighten the tension or the intensity of the scene. And then of course the color grading. It was an amazing experience. My first time to work with a team this big. Uh, 20, 25 people who just met that day. Yes, I was very excited, but at the same time, there's the pressure to make this good for these people who gave their trust and lent their energy and talent for this project. Fortunately, we were one of the finalists. Aside from the success or the recognition, what made this project very special for me are the people who made this possible. To our friends who contributed financially, to the videographers, to the drone ops, um, the photographers, the costume designers, uh, makeup and prosthetic artists, sound engineer, and of course the amazing actors. Again, I want to thank every one of you guys for being part of this project. As I was watching the behind the scenes, I was wondering, kailan kaya ulit ako makakagawa ng ganitong klaseng project? Let's see. Alright, that's it for now. As always, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and click the bell icon. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you on the next video.